Hi, I'm Laughing Buddha. Sorry, I, I should have warned you how terrible I am at doing interviews. Otherwise known as Jeremy Van Kampen. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, Laughing Buddha! Ah, you know, I can't. Keep on rocking out there, all you beautiful mushrooms. I'm Laughing Buddha, this is Mushroom TV, and it's been a pleasure to be with you. Hi and welcome to Mushroom TV, your Psytrance entertainment. In our program it's all about electronic, psychedelic music, culture, festival and arts. My name is Matt Mushroom and after 20 years of print and online magazine we thought it's time to start a TV channel for our beloved community. Today we start with Mr. Laughing Buddha. This guy knows the scene from the beginning. So we wanted to know from Jeremy how he got into the scene and what's the concept behind his music? Enjoy! The time I um, began making music and uh, started to become the Laughing Buddha was back in the early 90s and uh, I had just been taken to a party in London which was a Goa reunion party for people who had, uh, you know, knew each other from Goa. A friend of mine who had been out there in 1990, I think it was, uh, brought me in uh, early 91 to one of these parties. And uh, I think, you know, it's safe to say that nothing was the same after that. <laughs> it was a bit of a life-changing experience, you could say. Had my epiphany on the dance floor, and as so many of us have. And um, at that point, I decided that you know I, I wanted to do what I could to to help people to for, you know help people experience what I had experienced to to share some of that feeling of pure amazement, utter astonishment on the dance floor. I wanted firstly to know how it was possible and uh, you know it's like any any uh, magician you see, you want to know their tricks you know so I uh, I started I was already a musician I'd already studied classical music and uh, and I was also a, a rock guitarist at the time and so I very uh, quickly signed up for electronic music production courses I thought I could die happy if I just had one track that I had written played in a party <laughs> and then that happened and then I thought I could just die happy if I have one track released on a record label and then I could die happy if I have one album and it goes on and so on and so on yeah it, yeah, it was a difficult transition for me to make initially because I was so um, I was so focused on my rock music and, and playing live music in a band with other musicians and uh, you know I, I wasn't really uh, uh, I wasn't really an electronic music fan. I was almost instantly converted I think I found a kind of freedom in this music and it was exciting it was new it was different you know and these it sounded like it hadn't been made by by people it had been made by extraterrestrials from some spaceship somewhere and it was just being beamed down into my brain you know and it was ex incredibly exciting <laughs> and it felt like there was no limits to it it felt uh, endless opportunity musically creatively to uh, explore, uh, experiment, be creative. I think, uh, you know, by that time rock music had found its formula <laughs> and it was fairly uh, within its parameters, you know, so uh, yeah, this, this gave me something I could really get excited about. Yeah, 
there are, are many formulas around today and uh, a lot of the, the music has, well, the, the music has split into different genres and each genre has, has its formulas now, you could say. Um, the challenge uh, for me is to, is to find ways to, to break these formulas and to, to, to do something that is breaking new ground and is exciting and uh, uh, experimental and interesting. Um, it's very easy, you see these days, for everybody to sound similar to each other because everybody has access to the same technology in the past. Every studio had a different sound, every, you know, everyone had their own different collection of, of synthesizers and equipment which, which defined their music and their sound. Um, and, the, and these days it's very different, you know, everybody with access to a laptop can, can have all the same software plugins and uh, synthesizers and everything, so that everyone has the same tools. So now the challenge is how you use those tools to be distinctive, to be different. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good challenge, it's exciting. It's, everything is connected with um, art and creativity and it's all connected to experience and, and nature and feelings. You know, it's, it's, you know, I know that psychedelic trance might not sometimes feel like it has a lot to do with, uh, with, with feelings and you know a lot of it can be very cold or robotic you know but, uh, but, it, but it does and, and, and you know it's music if you want to become an artist of any kind you, or you simply have to decide that you are an artist you have to declare yourself an artist and then you start making art and it's as simple as that it's a choice it's a, it's a momentary decision you say I am an artist. You, there's, you know, there's no qualifications <laughs> to becoming an artist. It's something you just, you just, you choose. Times have changed. It's changed. wonderful that there are such a vast array of tools available now uh, to, to musicians. You, you have a lot more at your disposal than you ever used to do in the in the old days. Um, the problem, in fact, now is that, the, that there's too much available. And if you want to learn how to use your tools properly, um, well, for me, certainly, I find it helps to limit the amount of, of uh, technology that I use uh, and concentrate on a few key uh, things that, um, that do that do a very good job, and that I can learn and, and, and get more in depth with, you know. And then uh, that that's what uh, I, I find helpful these days. What I'm very keen to achieve musically is, um, as it's always been for me, has been about finding a balance between between light and the dark in the in in, in the music, because it's always been this. It's a sort of a split in the scene. You have very dark music and uh, and in, in a very light daytime music. But for me, real psychedelic music is in in the balance, is in the balance, the the twilight in the, in in the middle. So I'm interested in making music that makes people feel happy, positive, safe, uh, to, safe to get really twisted. So we, uh, you know, so so so, so you can. So you can play with some very far out, you know, twisted sounds and, uh, and crazy psychedelic noises, but it's not, it doesn't feel scary or threatening, you know? I think when you, if you can get the balance to make people dance and feel happy, but at the same time they're getting right out there and getting twisted up, then I think that's the goal, that's, that's the, the mecca for me. Yeah. Many things have changed since the early days of Goa. The only constant in the universe is change, after all. But um, uh, also many things haven't changed, you know. There's still the lot that I recognise when I go to Goa and, uh, you know, go to a party there. I, there's a lot that I recognise about how things used to be. A lot of the same people living there, a lot of the same 
the same spirit, you know, and uh, not just in Goa, but around the world. But of course it's changed because uh, we've had a, a whole new generation, you know, of people, a whole younger generation have, have emerged and they brought with them their, their new ideas and fresh input and uh, fresh perspective. And it's brought a lot of change, you know, and, uh, and that's a good thing. It's all been positive. And all change is positive. And change is not something to resist. Change is something to embrace. I always uh, prefer to look to the future and uh, than the past. Well, I'm... Um, Currently here in Hamburg, on a working on a collaboration with my good friend Fernando, uh, otherwise known as Wyo, and he's, uh, uh, he's here in the other room, and we are in his studio here in Hamburg. Yeah, so this has been a great fun. We, uh, yeah, I, I leave tomorrow, but we've been uh, having a great time here in the studio. We've got a great collaboration on the way for you guys. To come, um, I'm also currently working on material of my own, uh, um, but um, most excitingly, uh, my good friend Tristan has uh, moved to where I live in England in the countryside. He's left London and come to, to live very close to, where, to my house and uh, we now live 10 minutes from each other and have already uh, begun on new album with our project uh, Fearsome Engine and that's uh, something that I've been looking forward to doing for a very long time. Uh, it's been a while since the last album so I'm very excited about that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's been going great. <laughs>